So Dwight Eisenhower had a very interesting life. He went through West Point, then became a general, then led the United States in the European theater in World War II, then ran NATO, and then ultimately became president of the United States. This tool is called the Eisenhower Matrix, and it's called the Eisenhower Matrix because of Dwight Eisenhower. He used it in his professional life. Again, from waging war all the way to running the United States of America. It's a powerful tool that'll help you figure out what the priority is for the things that you're doing. The Eisenhower Matrix works like this. It is four quadrants in a graph. Think of the XY graph you've seen in school a million times. It's in four quadrants. And each of those quadrants has a title. They're called important and urgent, important, not urgent, not important, urgent, and not important, not urgent. Each of these has a place in making sure that you're making the right decision. So we're gonna talk about each quadrant, why each quadrant is important, what belongs in each quadrant, what questions you need to ask when putting or deciding what work needs to go in that quadrant and how you should operate once something is inside of that quadrant. This is a great tool to use in order to decide how to figure out the priority of the things you're doing so that you can make the right decisions and have great impact. So let's break down the terms important and urgent. Important are the things that really matter to the survival of whatever you're doing. So let's take your apartment, for example. Important would be paying your rent. Because if you don't pay your rent, it doesn't matter how anything else happens, it's over. Urgent, on the other hand, is based on time. So using that same example, things that are urgent. Taking out your trash is urgent. Is it gonna get you kicked out of the apartment if you don't have your trash taken out? No, but it needs to be done pretty fast or things are gonna go downhill in a hurry. So that's the difference. Important is the matter on the big scale of things, basically survival, and urgent is based on speed. How fast does this have to happen? So we're about to talk about one of the quadrants of the Eisenhower matrix. It's imperative to watch all four so you can make the right decision in picking where a task belongs. Make sure that you watch the other videos or finish reading this entire post to make sure you're using the Eisenhower matrix to the most of its ability. Because when you do, you'll see your productivity shoot up. We're talking about important and urgent, AKA fire, things that have to be done. It has to be done right now. These tasks are the things that make you clear your schedule and focus. Now, one of the biggest traps of this quadrant of the matrix is putting way too much into here. It goes back to that old saying, if everything is important, then nothing's important. This quadrant is reserved for things that are, as the metaphor states, on fire. If you're about to get kicked out of your apartment and you got three things to do, important, urgent. If it's a nice thing to have and people kind of want it, don't put it in this category. If it doesn't fit important and urgent, don't put it in this category. Why am I being so strict? Because these are the type of things that demand your entire focus. Nothing else in this matrix can be done if there's anything in important and urgent. You're not gonna be able to focus. You're not gonna be able to decide. You're not gonna be able to lead. So think of this as the emergency quadrant. If this seems like a big deal, it's because it is. If people overload this category, you'll end up seeing a lot of heart attacks. Does that sound serious? Because it is. I think this frame, important, not urgent, is the most important thing on the matrix. 
Why is that? Well, this is what you call the growth category. Things that are important but aren't time locked. These tend to be the things that push your career forward. That important business book that'll keep you sharp and ahead of the competition, important, not urgent. That coffee meetup that's going to get you that speaking gig at that conference, that's important, not urgent. Going out to the gym and working out with your team, important, not urgent. These are the things that happen to fall off the schedule, but we all know, take our careers and put them to the next level. These are the things that end up being the difference between people who live normal lives, nine to five lives, and those who become the Elon Musks of the world. Let's use Elon Musk as an example, since I just brought him up. Elon Musk does the PR for SpaceX and Tesla. Is that, in, is that urgent? No, but because his hands are on everything that comes out the door in terms of communication, he makes sure that it's a crisp, crystallized message that goes right from the CEO's brain to the sheet of paper, to the blog post, to the video, to the press conference. Is that important and urgent? No. But it's something that allows him to be the ultimate showman in getting things out the door and keeping his company afloat. Things like that are important, not urgent. PR has nothing to do with the balance sheet, but it's extremely important that he does it. So in terms of important, not urgent, take the time to think about the things that are going to launch your career and schedule time for them. Make sure there's a block of time in your week where you've disconnected from all the noise that comes in and work on these things. The reason why you wanna make sure they're crystal clear so that when you sit down, you can get right to work. Remember, these are the things that are going to push your career and it's critical that you think about them and get them done. This video we're talking about not important and urgent. These are things that while they don't really move or kick the tires on your career or the project, have to get done. At most people's jobs, this includes things like timesheets or progress reports or emails. These are urgent, but they don't really move the needle. I like to think of these things as things that can be batched. If these are things that you have to get out every day, right? that's the urgent, that's the time cycle, then batch these in the morning or the afternoon so you don't have to think about them. If it's once a week, then pick a Friday or Thursday or Tuesday and knock them out. The reason why you batch them is because although they are urgent, they're not important. So they don't deserve too much of your time, but they do deserve some time. So you wanna make time in order to get these things done so no one's screaming at you. Or if you're at that point in your career or you have the amount of resources to expend on this, try to delegate these. Try to find somebody in the office or your personal assistant uh, for some of us, it's a uh, virtual assistant. Try to get them to do this work for you. I hate and love this because when I started batching these things in my life, things got a lot easier. But I hate the fact that I had to batch them because they're usually, no, not consequential. They're usually boring and they're usually things that, while needing to get done, are annoying. So, in short, Either try to batch the things that fall into this category, pick a Wednesday at three o'clock to get these done. I'm not gonna judge you if you shove it off to someone else. You gotta do what you gotta do. But the end goal of it all is to get this stuff off your plate so you can get the things that matter done. This is actually, in some respects, the most important quadrant. What is it I'm talking about? Not important, not urgent. Or, where the trash is. What makes this quasi important and something that we all need to give thought to is that a lot of us do things that belong in this quadrant. We act as if they belong in the other quadrants, but in reality, they're not important 
and no one's going to miss them if they're gone. How do you determine if something belongs in this quadrant? Well, one, don't do it for a while. Sounds crazy, but this is the quickest way to figure out if something belongs in that quadrant. But I get it. Most of us don't have the ability to just stop doing things. Another way you can do it, just ask. Go to the person you report to or the person that's reporting to you and have a conversation on the importance of the thing that you're doing. In my experience, for the most part, if you come with a reason and you know that it does nothing for your work, it doesn't move the project forward, you can probably get it off your plate. If you can get as much into this quadrant as possible, you can build systems and your calendar to reflect on the other three and be that much more effective. Because that's the point of all of this, is you're trying to set priorities. It's not a method to get everything done. So we have all this information, but what good is information if we don't act on it? So unlike most tutorials out there, you're not gonna be able to leave this video without doing something. I want you to find a piece of paper right now. Pause this video, go find a piece of paper or post it note or something to write with. And grab a pen and draw an Eisenhower matrix. It's very simple. You just go up, left to right. Voila. Name the quadrants. You know what the quadrants are by now. Name each one of them. And then sit and think about the projects you have. What's important? What's urgent? What's important and urgent? What's important, not urgent? What's urgent, not important? and what belongs in the trash bin. Move forward and start getting the things done. We're leaders, which means we need to create impact. So the point of the Eisenhower matrix is to make sure that we're doing the right things with the right amount of fidelity. Don't end up working on the things that don't matter to spite the things that do. Mm -hmm.